on Ukraine first off. The, the, we called ourselves a BMW mission. Buses, metro, and walking. You, you don't have a lot, you don't rely on your own transportation. You get used to the maps. Uh, if you're in a city that is fortunate enough to have a subway like Kharkov, then it is incredibly efficient. It is cleaner than anything you'll find in the States. It's even cleaner than what you find in Japan. They are incredibly well kept and they are very efficient. The bus systems are interesting. You have routes that'll go all over to different parts of the city. You don't know necessarily what's going to happen. You have to make sure that you have a bus map and that will be included in most town maps that you would buy and use normally. Um, because of this, uh, you get used to kind of hopping back and forth and getting from place to place in perhaps not the most efficient manner, but you, you learn to make do. Um, more often than not, you spend your whole day walking. You are talking to people on the streets. That's considered a lot more effective than tracting. Uh, as, although winter, you tracked instead because you're frozen. Um, but in the summer, you're, you're always walking. It almost seems a shame to, to take a, a bus anywhere when you can walk and talk to people on the way there. Many of your areas are, are places where you can get from one end to the other with walking comfortably. Now, if you have to get from an appointment from one place to another, you better know the, the marshrutki, the, the bus routes. But um, when you get in the buses, it's very crowded. Don't expect seat belts. Expect to be standing. Uh, you're young, Ben. It would be polite to be standing, especially if there are women on board or older gentlemen than you would expect to stand. And you'll expect to have as many people crammed in there as humanly possible. You will get to know your neighbors very well because they will be pressed up against you. It's normal. Um, you will always have enough to eat. Uh, you may not have the most delicious thing to eat depending on the year. Produce varies greatly depending on whether it's in the summer when it's cheap and plentiful and in the winter it's none too appetizing perhaps but you will always be able to eat. They take care of you. Um, your housing, you can expect all of your apartments to have some sort of quirk, whether it's we only have one working electrical socket in the entire place, or the toilet screams like a banshee, or various other things. Everything has sort of its own flavor. Um, but you will always be in an apartment. Uh, you will typically be only two missionaries to an apartment. Very rarely will you put four missionaries in an apartment. And uh, you will be located within your own area. The majority of members are very much middle class. Uh, occasionally you'll find someone who is a doctor or a businessman. But by and large, you will find that a lot of the members will talk about how much more affluent they've become since joining the church because they're learning to budget their money. They're learning to live wisely. They're no longer spending a lot of their money on vodka, for example. Um, a lot of these will be told and you will see that the members thrive with the gospel. Uh, a lot of them come from very humble circumstances and they rise and they go much further. As far as activities, very often on your preparation day, you'll go play sports with those who are nearby, unless it's cold, in which case there's sometimes a bowling rink or something nearby. You will have a washing machine in your apartment more often than uh, every time. I've never known of an, uh, an apartment which didn't have a washing machine, or at least a centrifuge for the bathtub. Uh, Groceries are typically very easy to get. They will be very close to the bus stop, or they will be close to your house, or they'll be close to uh, a metro stop. And there are little bread bakeries everywhere. If you let them, they will rob you of all of your money because they have delicious chocolate-filled croissants and strawberry-filled croissants, and you just can't have one. And well, there's another one. We've been working for an hour. We might as well get another. Petty crime is very common. There are lots of jokes made about organized crime. I cannot testify to how prevalent it actually is or is not. I can say I was pickpocketed. I don't know what happened to my wallet. It disappeared. Um, but you, you should not be worried about, uh, about any violent crime. Closest you would have to worry about is occasionally someone will yell out, Go home, Yankee! They're probably drunk which means that with a brisk walking pace, 
you'll be able to avoid them and their jeers and insults because they're not going to be able to chase you. Um, you'll never encounter anti-Mormons. Most people don't know what the church is at all. Um, people actually said, towards the end of my mission, I saw this weird South Park episode, and they said it was about Mormons, but it was confusing. Because the translation was done so poorly, nothing made sense, fortunately. And so South Park actually became a great source for us to start distributing copies of the Book of Mormon because people were honestly curious because it made no sense what South Park was saying with their lies. Very convenient. Very convenient. But uh, you will find lots of Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, they are uh, a common faith. But other than that, um, many of the people who pr profess to be part of the Russian Orthodox faith We'll do that because in Russian it's pravoslavni. It means, just like the word orthodox, the right way to glorify God. However, it sounds a lot like the right thing for Slavs. So many people consider this mostly their ethnic duty as opposed to their religious duty. And you'll get people who will tell you, well, I hate Jews because Jews killed Jesus and Jesus was a Russian. And they will honestly believe that. They're not very educated. More than often, by far, the most common thing that you'll encounter is people who are atheists. They have absolutely no faith at all. And a lot of time, they don't have much hope. They feel like if there is a God, then the trials that they're dealing with in their country are just desserts for all of the crimes that were committed over the years. Or they'll talk about what happened with losing family to the to the gulags and how their father who was an engineer disappeared suddenly and they never heard from him again and so though there are, if anything is lacking it's an epidemic of hope you will not find people who will want to fight you but you will find lots of people who who need hope and if you manage to bring that into your lesson and teach them about eternal families you will very often find people who are willing to listen doesn't mean that everyone's going to jump into the uh, baptismal font within a month. But they'll be patient, and they'll be methodical, and they will listen to you. You'll see lots of old men playing chess and backgammon. They enjoy that. Um, the young men will play sports, especially soccer. And uh, you'll often end up having to, uh, to squat down. You don't stand when you're talking to young people. You squat. Um, and you'll just squat, and they'll, uh, you'll tell them that you don't want them to smoke near you, and they'll be courteous typically, and they won't smoke. Um, smoking is a very common problem there. There's something like 60% of all women, and about that of men, are all smoking. Um, they're very willing to talk and listen. 